and we're live on mm. the new set again. Whoa! This is like the third set in the last two months? Month? Two months? Are you counting the between two ferns kind of set? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So fourth? Who's okay, counting? so we had the original set. Yeah. Then we had between two ferns. Temporary. We had between two ferns deluxe, but I don't think that necessarily counts. Mm. Because it was like between six ferns. <laughs> um, and then we had like the, we're in a corner and it's weird. And then now we're here. It was like the tech linked sideshow. Yeah. Like the yeah. tech dinked. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Relegated to the corner. Now, dedicated hex wall. Yeah. Red so versus this, blue with an orange chair. This is the new set. The The orange chair is a little clashing. Mm. Uh, the, the white and gray chair works pretty well. Uh, maybe we'll try to swap that one out. Who knows? It'll probably never happen. Doesn't matter. This is the new set. Welcome to the new Na Wan Shet. Mm. Shet? Bizarre set. world. Yeah. It's weird. It's it's also very weird because we've had the WAN show in the other corner of the office near where the workshop is uh, for the longest time. Not not the entire time that we've been here because WAN show was technically like in some weird spare room for a little while and all this kind of stuff. But for many years, it's been in the same corner facing the exact same direction. And now we are like almost as far away as possible mm -hmm. from that point at the complete other side of the office. Should be quieter over here. It should be a lot quieter, and I think the sound absorption stuff in general should be a lot better. Um, we'll have to, I wonder what the Twitch chat is saying. Let's do a straw poll, actually. I'm gonna set up a straw poll. Straw poll dot me. I want to ask people whether it's like thumbs up or thumbs down for this set versus the other set. All right. Do you prefer the old area? Do you like the new area? Uh, new set, better? Worse. Worse? Wait, third option? I D G A F. <laughs> I don't care. F. Whoa. <laughs> I don't care, Fatso. <laughs> hey! That's mean. <laughs> I resent that. Okay, what the heck? What just happened? I'm gonna refresh. What is that? There we go. All right. I want to see what Twitch chat has to say. Um, there we go. I missed the old set. I expected that. I expected a lot of people were going to bring that up. Um, we fear change. Yeah, a lot of people do fear change in general. What do you think, Ed? New set, old set, which one? Um, I'm working on throwing a light at you guys. Ed's trying to give us another light. I think it looks mostly okay. The no. Background. Yeah, it's a little weird. Background's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Get out of there. You're blocking us. Instead oh of lighting. God, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Way to go, Ed. It's it's like you work around cameras. Some or people something. just aren't camera aware. You know. So we got lots of sweet. Oh wait, are you still talking about straw poll? I am. Okay. Here we go. We got nothing. Never we've, mind. We've made it. So a lot of people don't care. Majority people. Uh, if they care, think it's worse, but that's not super surprising because again, people fear change. We're gonna ask you next week again. We're gonna ask you next week again. We're gonna maybe keep this poll going. Also, the lighting is like really not perfect yet, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm interested in what people think. I think it should be darker. Oh, just mood lighting. Yeah. Get some candles. Yeah. The flickering. Yeah, that that good. Philips Hue tech candle. Okay, but now on to the actual show. What do we have? Lots of sweet topics. Tons of topics. We finally found out for sure what happened in the unfortunate Uber accident from March where that woman was killed. Yeah. We also now know that Apple knew that the iPhone 6 would bend. They knew it was going to bend before it launched. Now we know that. That's <laughs> sick. That is actually pretty interesting. Also, Nintendo bans all online access to Switch devices owned by Hackers. This is on a uh, account basis. We'll talk more about that later. And there has already been GDPR complaints made against Google and Facebook in the least surprising news ever. This is the deadline day for GDPR, so you should stop getting mass emails about it pretty soon here. Um, I'm sure you've God probably willing. received a lot. By the way, we're updating our privacy policy. I didn't even know I subscribed to you. <laughs> Unsubscribe. I did a thing with the forum, which is, it's going to annoy some people for surezies, but instead of emailing everyone, I mean, yeah. so the next time you go log in, yeah. it's just like, hey, 
I saw that and uh, it confused me at first. I was like, ah, I typed the wrong thing in and I loaded it again. I was like, I'm going to have to scroll down. See, my problem is I did the same thing. So I think a lot of people are going to be pretty confused. You got to scroll down and click the agree button. Sorry about that. Roll the intro. It's a little confusing. Let's press the button. Let's go. Uh, uh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's a beautiful lagoon. Hold on. Never leave. Hold on. How do I? I can't just. <laughs> Uh, okay. What's wrong? Will that do something? Hey! Yes! Yeah! That will give you swamp butt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Thanks, Ed. Killing me off <laughs> in the intro. Maybe that's why I left. <laughs> Savage Jerky, Savage, just like Ed. Um, Moss Backpack. The Black Pack. Yeah. And then a Bloody Gaming. Bloody Gaming. Keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. I'm happy that I fixed the uh, fixed the intro. I wonder if that's the only time that it's been broken and then came back to life eventually. Um, a new intro for a new beginning. <laughs> Speaking uh, of... What is Ed doing? Uh, the, the reddening. He's, he's messing with the light. Whatever, keep keep it going, Speaking Eddie. Speaking of uh, not new beginnings, old 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 happenings. What just happened? You may remember. <laughs> what have you done? I don't you, know. Can I keep going here? I fixed it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Travel back in time to yes. September 2014 when the iPhone 6 came out, and and Unbox Therapy was like biggest video of all time. Drop. Okay. Ben you Yes. Yeah. So there was a bunch of viral content of videos and yeah. pictures of people who like, look at my nice new shiny iPhone all bent to the shape of my legs. My hipster jeans are so tight. And then all the iPhone haters like me were like, <laughs> Nerds. and then you know, like they, I've got an Android phone. They don't always design things good. It's a brick. It doesn't bend. And then Apple basically said like, this isn't a design flaw. <laughs> it's designed good. It's just there's like some bad apples out there. You know, we make a million of these things. Get it? But now, <laughs> information contained in internal Apple documents filed under seal in a class action lawsuit show that Apple knew that the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus were susceptible to bending prior to the phone's launch. The company found in an internal investigation that the iPhone 6 is 3.3, repeating of course, times more likely to bend than the iPhone 5S, and not surprisingly, the 6 Plus is 7.2 times more likely to bend than the iPhone 5S. Um, that's kind of a weird statistic because, like, the big one's more likely to bend than the small one. No, no kidding. No, that make, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that makes sense. <laughs> so then the phone launched, and everyone found out they were bending, and that was bad. Uh, and then in early 2016, many iPhone 6 and 6 Plus devices start to exhibit symptoms of what's called touch disease. So you would get like a flickering gray bar at the top of your screen or your your screen would be working only intermittently or not at yeah, all. Yeah. And then it was determined by various third party repair people that that was happening because the the integrated circuit responsible for transiting the touches to code was getting lifted off of the board because your phone got bent so then the chip would get lifted off a little bit. So then people started complaining about that and Apple didn't say anything. They didn't confirm that, but they quietly started to put, what do they call, underfill underneath the chip so that future phones that got shipped would actually be stronger. But they didn't say that to the public. They did not publicly acknowledge touch disease until November 2016, even though it was May of that year that they started uh, fixing all of the chips. And they only acknowledge it in November right, because there's like widespread news reports about the issue. And at that, that, that time, they said that they were going to start replacing touch disease phones for uh, a mere $150. And that had previously been a $350 charge. And in it, its public announcement, when they said they were going to do all this, they didn't actually say that they changed, that they started fixing them. Yeah. They didn't say that. Yeah. They just said they're going to replace the touch disease ones. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't say I'm surprised, but it is really interesting news. 
it's probably gonna hurt some, at least some amount of the Apple fanboyism. But the Apple fanboyism hasn't been doing very well over the last few years. Well, that's anyways. the thing. It's just an another episode in a series of trust betrayals over the last while. Whether yeah. that's iOS rollouts that had all these bugs, or whether it's what else did they do? Uh, naming schemes <laughs> or well, help the, me out here. The, the the ten came out, and while a lot of people do like it, there's a huge amount of issues with it. Um, t taking away the headphone jack pissed a lot of people off. Big one, including loyal fans. Like, like they, the, I, I know this is coming from a PC fan and like an Android fan, but I feel like sentiment really isn't there lately. Like back when I used to work in a computer store, there was like you'd have the Mac people come in, and they were really hardcore. And I worked with people that were there that were Mac fans, and they were really hardcore. And it was kind of hard to debate because it came down to both sides were giving logical arguments. It just was that one side put more weight on one thing. Yeah. And the other side put more weight on a different thing. Sure. So that made it so they liked different things. It was fine. It was an interesting battle. Now it's kind of getting a little worse because the stuff that they used to trash on like, like PC stuff or Android stuff for is starting to happen on their side as well. And then I, I think that Google's closing the gap. Now that we have a, that a flagship device that yeah. kind of represents Android, being the Google Pixel, then it's kind of easier. Although, Apple's still ahead in that. And this we're talking yeah, about phones absolutely. here. Let, let's acknowledge, as a Windows user, Windows sucks. I'm like this close to the switching to Mac. What, what, what version of Windows do you run? Uh, I don't think I have the Spring Creators update on but my... But 10? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. That, might, that might be why. I shouldn't have to use like 2004 software I know. to get a good experience. I'm just saying. Like, like 2018 stuff should be the best stuff. If you can make it work without being a pirate, um, you can get the the embedded systems Windows 10 version. It's yeah. far better. Mm. Or I would recommend uh, the same situation embedded systems, but you don't have to be a pirate to get it. Uh, Windows 8.1. It's just a lot better. Yeah. It's one one of my favorite things is when you're like, hey, I want to disable Windows Update, and they're like, or, no. <laughs> it's like, what? That's not how a computer's supposed to work. Anyways, I think we're probably good for that topic. No, there's more interesting oh, things about okay. it. So, my bad. in a court filing in the class action case, Apple's lawyers wrote that its rigorous and comprehensive reliability test data proved that enclosure bending and twisting cannot cause the uh, the, t the touch disease issue unless the phone had already been repeatedly dropped on a hard surface. And I think that's so interesting because what, the, what it says to me is like, look, we made a design choice, but that choice, like sure it might cause bending, but it's that choice is not gonna brick your phone and cause this touch disease unless you already screwed up by dropping it a bunch. It harkens back to, I believe it was the iPhone 4 circa 2010 where- the, people, You're holding it wrong. Is that what you're Well, I don't know. It was, they couldn't get good qual, uh, call quality because there was a band of aluminum around the outside. So calls were dropping and their official response was, making phones is hard. We're really good at it, but no one could make a, a phone that's perfect. So we're still the best. It's just phones are hard. So they, they what they, what they're doing, and they need to do this, is they need to continue to promote this and propagate this this like fiction that we all buy into, where Apple has superior engineering. And as soon as that myth erodes, then what do they have? Yeah. So I, I think this is very on brand for the lawyers to have this this statement. That stance, yeah, that makes sense. Um, we're moving on to a hard topic now. Uh, it, it's it's something that's difficult to approach in general, and people have talked about it. People have mentioned it in in Twitch chat already, asking why uh, it, it wasn't like the first topic. It wasn't the first topic because I just didn't necessarily think we would lead with this. I wanted to bring something slightly more upbeat to the table. Um, we have had this man on the WAN show in the past. He was one of our guests quite a long time ago when we used to bring a lot more guests on. But uh, John Total Biscuit Bane has passed away. Um, he has succumbed to a four-year battle with cancer. Uh, he's just 33 years old. 
uh, in, in the notes, but I'm going to go off notes, is talking about how he contributed a lot to gaming as a whole. He was really big into the StarCraft II scene. Uh, his, his YouTube channel was pretty massive in terms of reviews. If you're in the PC gaming community, you probably know of him. You've probably seen one of his game reviews. Especially indie games. Especially indie games. That was very cool because I really liked indie games for a long time. Uh, the Very few people in the audience might remember this, but I used to have indie game reviews from PAX. They got like no views compared to the rest of our content, so I stopped, but still. Um, his wife, Jenna, is is still around um, and has stated that she's going to continue the co-optional podcast as well as her own YouTube channel. So if you want more of that flavor of content, uh, be sure to tune in. And unless you have something to say, I don't I don't think I'm going to keep going. Um, if if you if you want, check him out. the The YouTube channel is still there. His Twitter is still there. You can still watch all his old reviews of indie games. If you want to check different things out. Um, and if you did that, if you consume that content today, you'd still be supporting those yeah. who survived him, like yeah. his like his wife Jen, like Jenna, his wife. for example. Check out her YouTube channel. Keep watching co-optional podcasts. Do all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Rest in peace, John. Rest in peace, John. And moving on, because I don't want to. No possible yeah. segue. No, literally There's not. Just no possible segue now. No. Um, so here's a story that we reported on when it first broke in March. The the accident that happened in Arizona with a, a self-driving Uber that, uh, again, this is actually also kind of dark, it was the first pedestrian death in a self-driving car case. So there's there's been a report published by the National Transportation Safety Board. It has all the details of what happened, what parts of the car's systems failed, uh, the human error, the, the software, all of it we know now, finally. So there's really like a play-by-play -play in the report, which you'll be able to um, click through. It's source number three if you get access to the WAN doc, doc or if you go to the RS article that Luke has on the screen, yeah. um, you'll be able to click through as well from the first paragraph. This the WAN doc will be available on the forum after the show, by the way. And this was posted on the forum, by the way, by Spartaman64. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know, there was a self-driving Uber cruising down uh, a, I believe it's, there's two lanes, it's at night, there's two left turning lanes and then there's a bike lane on the right and ba basically it's nighttime and a woman crosses the street, not at a crosswalk, which is pretty much irrelevant, uh, walking her bicycle. And the car strikes uh, the woman and she ev eventually died because of her inju injuries. There's also dash cam footage that um, was released that shows what the car is heading towards and also inside the car. and. The view inside of the car, you can see an Uber employee who's supposed to be responsible for taking over in tricky circumstances, who appears to be looking down possibly at a smartphone, and no one knew if this person was being uh, negligent or what. But now we have more details. So uh, this is just crazy. So what, apparently what happened was uh, shortly after this story broke, we learned that the, there was a statement from the producers of the LiDAR systems that they believe that they had checked and that their systems had performed properly. And the report confirms that. So what happened was, as the vehicle approached, um, her, I believe her name was Elaine, at first the vehicle detected just an object. This is at six seconds away from collision. Then as it gets closer, it's decided, okay, that's a vehicle. And then finally, that's a bicycle. But here's the problem. As <laughs> hold on, at 1.3 seconds before impact, the self-driving system determined that an emergency braking maneuver was needed to mitigate a collision. According to Uber, emergency braking maneuvers are not enabled while the car is under computer control <laughs> to reduce the potential uh, for an erratic vehicle behavior. So the car sees that oh, this is going to be crazy. Uh, it's going to need some tricky steering to for us to avoid this. I'm not allowed to do that. The driver has to do that. So I should probably notify the driver. There are no alerts set up. The system is not designed to oh. alert the operator. Wait, it gets worse. So then you're thinking, okay, so, but if there's someone in the driver's seat- I was just gonna say, this is still a problem because sh the car shouldn't have to alert the driver. They should be paying attention. Well, it still should alert the driver because you could be- Yes, but it shouldn't have to. It shouldn't have to. It should like okay. No, it should have to. Sorry, but it it the the, the problem should have still been solved. Right. So you sh presumably the person sitting in the driver's seat, they're saying, they're thinking, oh, this looks weird. I should take over. Yeah. But you would still like to see like 
you might be like thinking, when is this a situation where the car is gonna do it or not? It'd be nice if the car was like bang, 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 and then you're like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna take over. But it gets worse because the driver is actually responsible for monitoring diagnostic messages that appear on an interface in the center stack of the vehicle dash oh. and tagging events of interest for subsequent review. That's what she's looking at. Oh. She's looking down, not at her phone. I mean, this is ba her, as per her statement. She did have a personal and a business phone in the car, but she claims she was actually just looking at the interface that yeah. she is supposed yeah, yeah. to be looking at. Yeah. So now you've got a situation where Uber's paying drivers to sit in the car and look at it and not look at the road, basically. And then the car's not going to go ding, 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 look up. And then it plows into a, a pedestrian, ca causing that person's death. Jeez. Like, you should have seen that coming. That is silly design. That is That's silly. like negligent. That's a bad system. Be presumably, when, these, when the engineers are working on this system, they would be you would pay most attention to this kind of case. This isn't like an edge case. This is the critical what could happen case. Your, your takeover driver is constantly not looking at the road. That's not, that can't work that way. You could even like, it, 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 you said something along the lines of like, oh, they have to make note of different events and stuff like that. I feel like you could just have a log where you have some form of like controller that's on the steering wheel while you're like, this type of event just happened, this type of event just happened, just keep constantly keep notes and then fill it out later. At the you very have cameras least, and stuff. At the very like, least, it needs to go ding, ding, ding. Hey, stop yes. looking down. Yeah. Just crazy. So now, um, after Ugh. that accident happened, Uber suspended its self-driving testing in lots of different places. Um, and, and HUD would work. Someone, yeah, someone just said a HUD would work. Yeah, you could have something on the freaking... Yeah. I feel like the driver should definitely be able to be looking up. The fact that they have to look down is really stupid. There's got to be some, whether it's a simplified controller or it's one of those like dial things that are super popular in cars so that they can at least still be looking up and just have it post up onto the windshield. Sorry, continue. Uh, the, just the upshot is that Uber has now pulled its self-driving program out of Arizona, laying off 300 people. And as far as I could tell, I think that all of its self-driving operations now are happening out of its... Um, advanced technology center in Pittsburgh, like its own compa compound or campus, and no longer in test cities. Okay. So uh, that's going to hurt. Yeah, probably. But I think one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest things that's going to hold back automated driving and automated almost anything is companies being careless with it and having stupid things like this happen. Um, and I hope that the companies that aren't being careless with it um, and this isn't me, Elon Musk jumping. There's definitely more than one. Um, keep pushing forward, I guess. Well, I, almost every high profile company has had some kind of story about this, whether that's oh, yeah. Tesla or Waymo. And there's a, been a bunch with Tesla too. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's a fine line though, because they're all trying to push to be first to market. There's going to be a huge first mover advantage. And there's something to consider that is like, there will always be some amount of failure rate. Um, and it, it's comparing that failure rate versus the failure rate of human drivers. And as long as we're beating that, then good. But like, I, it needs to, every single time that it does happen, because it's an automated system, we can go in and look at what happened with, with a human driver. It's much harder. Yeah. It's much, much, much For harder. Sure. And you rarely have a camera looking in the vehicle at the driver. So you can't tell. You anybody. can actually diagnose these problems and yes, ideally solve them every iteration should be improved or at least, yes yes exactly so not necessarily even solve it but like make it less likely to happen at the very least and that's a, on a system level yeah like if you get into an accident you may never repeat that mistake again but that doesn't affect how i drive it doesn't improve humanity yeah right but it's kind of yeah. like uh, cars versus airplanes you know people feel unsafe on airplanes yeah. even though they're much safer but yeah. it's about control you don't control the plane that's fair. So that's a lot of the time, though, like, I, okay, so I've always found it, that you, you brought up the cars versus airplanes thing. Um, I've always found it interesting that everyone's like, oh, have a safe flight, have a safe flight. Everyone seems so concerned. <laughs> I'll try. But then, like, if, if you jump in, like, a taxi or they send you away in an Uber or something, like, all right, get out of here. Like, <laughs> People say drive no safe. Care. Yeah, that, that's true. People do say drive safe. I just think it's like the, like, have a safe flight thing is like a, like a guaranteed. Yeah. I don't know. And what are you going to do about it? Yeah. What is it? I'll put my seatbelt on. Yeah. I will listen to that demonstration. Do you? I'll put that mask on before I put it on my kid. That's the extent of safe flight that I can guarantee you.
Where's where's your uh, flotation device? Oh, underneath my seat. Oh, there Usually. you go. Nice. <laughs> Sometimes it is the seat cushion itself. I like when uh, they have that little straw and they go. The little what? They pretend to blow in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't inflate itself, you can manually inflate your your thing. Have you ever uh, flown with Air France? No. They have a video. It's the the in the pre-flight check thing plays as a video, and the video is. Like the people demonstrating are five Victoria's Secrets models, and they're all being really cute and funny, and it's very effective <laughs> at at getting your attention. That's actually pretty funny. That's a that's a. I mean, if it makes if it makes more people watch, like you know, maybe it's not a bad thing. Who knows? It's so. They should French. have the same. But it's the opposite. Frenchest thing you've seen. That too. is a pretty. Of course, French they did that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of course, they did that. Uh, I'm going to talk about Floatplane for a second. Uh, it, it's a wonderful platform. You should check it out. Um, I heard that if you, uh, if when you go to watch Full Plane, if you pop some popcorn and like dim the lights a little bit and stuff, that it will increase the viewership experience. So I would I would recommend doing that. Uh, the Linus Tech Tips channel on here has been going ham. So if you want to check it out, you've got Linus Tech Tips, Tech Quickie, and TechLinked all publishing all under the same freaking channel, uh, which I don't think was in the agreement uh, when we first started this. So, but if you want to check them out, That's a bargain. There's, there's tons of videos. Also, there's Bitwit Ultra, who's uploading fantastic stuff, and Tech Deals, who uploaded by far the longest video that we've had on Full Plane, which was like that well over an you? hour. Did it stress the it, system? It, it, it stressed me a little bit, but everything was okay. Everything worked fine. It was great. We didn't even didn't even let didn't let us know it was coming, which was actually cool. Oh yeah. Because I heard through another person, like, oh wow, there's this super long video on the platform. And I was like, it worked. <laughs> you don't That's say. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, anxiety attacks like again about control. It's in the past, but you still have to experience I'm like, that. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that transcode didn't work at all. But yeah, anyways, full plane's great. It's three bucks per creator so far because everyone has decided to have the same price. Uh, you can check it out at floatplane.com. You can uh, watch videos. They look great. They sound great. Uh, the comment section is much less cancer than it is on YouTube. Things are good. So yeah, check out Floatplane. And now for the rest of the sponsor stuff, we've got Bloody Gaming. Uh, can you say your thing? Bloody Gaming. There you go. <laughs> See, I think that's actually pretty good. I'm like... Oh, pretty bad though. It's like the worst person in, in England. <laughs> Who sounds like that? I can't do accents at all. In it. Riley's In it. really good. Riley's really good at that. That would make sense. I could see him being really good. There we go. Here's my notes. Uh, today we're talking about the Bloody Gaming B975 keyboard, which um, isn't this one, despite this being a bloody keyboard. I don't have it here today, but... Uh, wait, no, this is the B945. There we go, which has the... I can't even show you because it's under my laptop. Wait, yep, I can. The numpad is on the other side. So like this is where WASD is and then this is the numpad. I think that's way better for gaming. It depends on, so it, it's actually kind of interesting, especially if you don't use the numpad that often for like transactional like data stuff, or something. but you might want it for macros. It's, yeah. a, it's an interesting idea because you wouldn't normally have your hand on that side of the keyboard, but if you're doing like accounting and stuff, you would much more often be full keyboard. When you're gaming, you're very often just one hand. So having macro keys Yeah, you just have all those, cool. that much more real estate for your macros. And then you've yeah. also got this added benefit of having your mouse closer, more ergonomic, yeah. less shoulder strain. So yeah, shoulder strain it's is like a big you're using deal. A, it's like you're using a poker or like a 60% keyboard, but you're not. A lot of people will go with uh, 10 keyless keyboards and then get a separate 10 key so they can put it on the other side of their mouse. Don't so that they to. can be squared up shoulder shoulder down to mouse everything's okay and then go over for numpad but this is really easy too yeah just a different idea but we're talking about the 975 uh which is standard full size for those that don't want to switch form factors like me uh double shot abs keycaps less gamer front text kind of stuff and much more clean look uh, it includes a wrist rest with two colors, black and red, and still has a 25% off deal with promo code Tech Tips. Check it out on Amazon or in the links below if you are on YouTube. Then next up, we have the Moss Backpack. Black Pack. The Black... Oh, it is literally called the Black Pack. Yeah, I wasn't joking. I thought you just were repeatedly making the same joke. You can't trust anything I say. That was fantastic. I joke too often. I was like, it is, it is black. Yes, it is in fact... Not on the inside. Black. Yes, okay, this is one of my favorite things. 
about this backpack is that it's bright orange on the inside. I've had this with a couple bags. It's it's way more important than you might realize at the beginning because you can find anything immediately. There's a power cable in the bottom. It's right there. You can see it so easily. It's actually great. I love backpacks that have bright orange insides because almost nothing else is ever bright orange. So if you need to find anything, it's super easy. It's also reflective. So you notice how it like glows a little bit. It just, it helps. I don't know. I don't know. I like it a lot. Don't worry about it. I'm into backpacks. It's a thing. But speaking of that power cord, you have the ability to plug your backpack in. Where's the external access bit? Do -do -do -do. I know it has it because I watched their video, but I don't know. Here it is. is. So in the side of the backpack, you can pull out a power cable. There it is. This can plug directly into the wall through a side access port, so you don't have to completely open your bag. You just open where the power cable is. Then on the inside of the bag... So you can charge your laptop or whatever else. Yeah. It, doesn't it come with... I thought I saw in their video that it like came with a battery bank or something. I don't, I don't want to say it does if it doesn't. Here. Yeah. Is it in the notes? You know what it does have is a there's a waterproof pocket. There's a pocket over here just for your water bottle. That's so you cool. put your water in there and it's completely sealed off and everything's safe. And if your bag's too full, you can pull that out Expand and just have out. the water hanging on the outside. That's cool. I like that. But attached to that power cable is a standard power plug for like your laptop or something and then two USB ports, which is actually pretty sweet. I like that a lot because then you can charge your laptop and you can charge your uh, mobile devices. It has a pass through right here into the front. So if you have your phone lodged up in the front or something, then that will work. Um, but yeah, you can charge your you can charge a battery battery bank. You can charge your phone and your laptop all by plugging your backpack into the wall without needing to take anything out of it. That's super cool. If you're a commuter or something like that, you just want to come home and plug the bag in. You don't want to take all your stuff out. That's fantastic. Um, they call that a Reach C power adapter. Pretty cool. It's a 60 watt USB Type C port uh, for a MacBook or other Type C device. That is sweet. But yeah, great backpack. Feel free to check it out. Also, last sponsor is Savage Jerky. Sauvage. Sauvage Jerky. jerky. Uh, Savage Jerky, they've been on the show a million times. You guys kind of know what it's about, but I'm going to go over it anyways. Jerky is made with the best ingredients without nitrates or preservatives. Their goal is to create a snack that's full of flavor um, and just it isn't supposed to be bad for you either. That's cool. People seem to like the sriracha bacon. Apparently that's quite popular. Um, I like pretty much everything they have. It's like to be completely honest. every one of these bags is open because yeah. you just they always get eaten. They do. People find the box and then steal them. My favorite personal one is Moho, but again, I like literally all of their flavors, so that, that works for me. Uh, you can use offer code LTT to save 10% off their products, which is cool. Um, and they also have one of them. I'm not sure where it is. It, Ivan keeps eating it, so it could be gone. But one of theirs is made with the like the hottest peppers in the world, the Carolina Reaper. They have a reaper jerky. Which oh, like, yes. That's pretty dang hot, It'll actually. probably kick your butt. So if you're into that, feel free to check it out. And we're back. Oh, we're going back. What do you want to do now? Oh, let's talk about Alexa. Oops, sorry I said it. Amazon Echo. Oh, no. So there is a family in, I believe, Oregon, Portland. And they were hanging out. And suddenly a phone call came in to the husband. And it was one of his employees who lives in, I believe, Seattle, many, many miles away. And the guy was like, quick, unplug all your A-L-E-X-A devices. You're getting hacked. And what had happened was, for whatever reason, the Echo started recording at, uh, at a time that the inhabitants of the house did not know it was recording and recorded a big uh, conversation they had. Then it proceeded to send the audio files to a random person in their contact list. And so this guy called and, uh, you know, the, the husband's like, what are you talking about? You're just joking. Like, yeah, right. Haha, <laughs> good one. And the guy's like, no, you were talking about your hardwood floors. Like, I heard it. And they're like, oh, God. And so then they, con they contacted Amazon and Amazon put an engineer to investigate right away. And eventually a statement came out. First, the engineer said, like, uh, there will be a fix. It kind of made it seem he didn't just brush it off as user errors like we're gonna fix something but then the statement comes out and it's kind of 
it's not user error, um, but it, the system acted kind of as intended. So here's what the, where the heck are we here? Here's the, here's the, the events, what happened? Echo woke up due to a word in a background conversation sounding like the hot word. <laughs> then the subsequent conversation was heard as send, send message, message request, at which point the echo said out loud, to whom? Now, if the volume was turned down and they were ranked far away, then they wouldn't have heard that, right? Uh, at which point the background conversation was interpreted as a name in the customer's contact list. So they kept having this conversation and the echo was just kind of picking out where it's like, I think it said send message. I think it said to Craig. And then... And then it carried out that uh, that request. And so as unlikely as a string of events like that is, Amazon is evaluating the options to make the case even less likely. At the same time, like, you have you have a smart home device. Yeah. How often have you had it spring up and do something weird? Lately, it seems like more than before. Yeah, I Quite have a too. Bit. Quite yeah. a bit. So I've got my, my Google Home Mini. I've went into the settings and, and turned on the settings so that when you hail it, it goes ding, which is off by default. Normally it just would light up and I had people across the house, they'd be trying to hail it and maybe they're not very experienced with it and they wouldn't know whether or not it had heard them. Uh, so I put on the feedback yeah. noise, but that's also super helpful too because then if I'm watching a movie and the movie says something like, um, no, you go. And that sounds like, yeah, hey, then um, I'll hear it. And I can just say never mind, and it'll it'll turn off again. But um, I guess what's happening here is the way that these that this that machine learning works uh, basically with this kind of thing is there's a probability that when it hears something, it'll say, okay, that's a that's a a point eight out of one. Let's say there's an eighty percent chance that they just said what I think they said, and then there's a decision threshold. So uh, the engineers will say. Anything greater than a 0.75 is good. And so that counts as, we're going to call that a positive. So you can shift that decision threshold based on the stakes of whatever you're talking about. So if you're talking about a spam email, for example, calling something, um, letting in spam when it's not spam, that's not that high stakes. Because then you log into your email and you have, a sp you have some spam in there and you're like, oh, that's annoying and I'm just going to delete it. But calling it an email that is not spam, spam is can be catastrophic because yeah. then you don't get back to the client or you miss an important appointment or whatever. So what they need to do to fix this, I think, is they're probably going to have to adjust the decision threshold so that they get less false or fewer false positives. But then the flip side of that is you're going to be like, it's going to be more frustrating hey, to use. Hey, and it's not going to hear you when there's music playing or something like that. So they just need to, to dance around that. Yeah. It's it's that's an extremely delicate and difficult thing to do, especially because there's going to be so many different environments that it's going to be used in. There's going to be so many different accents, vocal levels. Some people are quiet. Some people are loud. Like it's they're uh, probably going to have to personalize it per, on a per user basis. Just have it learn each one, learn its own owner. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, I mean, I know that the Google one does that already for my voice. They have yeah. voice match, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like when I say call mom, it calls my mom or plays good music to me is different than good music to my wife who just listens to dead most and that's it. Strobe's a good song. She learned that on the piano. We got a piano. She only learned that song. <laughs> it was like, it was not easy. So it took her like months. That's all she played. And then she figured it out and then she never played piano again. I was like, <laughs> you need to. You would learn the song faster if you just learned easy songs first. That's fantastic. Um, speaking of fantastic or not, Essential is up for sale, like the phone company. It's a rumor. It's a rumor. They haven't officially announced it, but it's come. Okay. The story's coming from, you know, those in the know. Yeah. Um, I hate rumors, so I'm not really that interested. But apparently, the next phone also rumor has been canceled, also rumor. So, I don't know. Do people care? A lot of people seem to care. I saw a lot of comments in the forum that were like, I didn't buy it, but I was interested in it, and I was about yeah. to buy it, or I was planning on buying the next iteration. Because I actually didn't really know much about the Essential phone, and I was looking at it today, and I was like, that thing's sick. Yeah. It's sweet. So, I actually kind of recommended it to a few different people, um, or at least, the idea of looking into it and comparing it for their own option. 
Um, but I don't I don't know general public wise mm. like how much people care. They didn't do a whole lot of advertising. They didn't have like a like had a lot of fanfare, maybe in tech circles, but for the public, I'm not sure. It looked pretty bold. I mean, this was the first phone with a notch. It came out before the iPhone 10, and the notch is smaller. It's almost completely, completely bezel-less. It's a, it's nice looking. I care. I care. Samsung or Apple only, or I don't care. Samsung or Apple only. What about like Google phones? That that would be I don't care. Or I care. One of the two. The Samsung or Apple only option is like a weird way of me being like. Nah, I'm not really that into phones. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I see when people don't really know phones too that, that much. They're like, oh, I don't know if I should buy an Apple or a Samsung. Because mm. they just don't even, like the Android category is seen as Samsung. You know what I get a lot? Especially when iPhone 10s were new. This would be sitting on the table. Is that an iPhone 10? No, it's not. Oh, what is that thing? It's an LG V30. Interest lost. An LG? I've heard, I've heard of a guy get roasted at the bar. He's trying to wheel some lady and get wait what got roasted. Uh, like she's like, what kind of phone is that? It's like, oh, it's an LG. And she's just like, what? It's like iPhone or die? <laughs> like, <sighs> like delete your Tinder. You have an LG. Like, <laughs> like I don't actually really want to have an LG, but this is a sweet phone. Other yeah. like they just have quality control issues. I don't really dig. Like I've, <laughs> this is like my third one, just incidentally. And everyone's had like the same kind of problem, like it doesn't detect my SIM or something like that. I really liked a G3, I had an LG G3. Yeah. I really liked that phone. So most people don't care. 50, 51% of people say, I don't care, straight up. Uh, 80, uh, 18% of people say Samsung or Apple only. I expected there'd be a surprising percentage there. And then 31% of people care. That's actually way more than I thought. Well, so you that's, that's cool. The thing with the essential phone was that it was like, Tr the closest to stock Android you could get outside of a Pixel. And that's awesome. Amazing. Yeah. And it was way cheaper, eventually. When it launched, it was 700 bucks, and I don't think it could have competed against other flagships in that price range, but yeah. when they were struggling and they dropped it to 500 or even less, then it was like a hell of a deal. Maybe they should have opened up with that, but then they had $300 million of investment. They spent $100 million of it developing the phone, so they just needed to sell these things. Yeah, Essential raised about three hundred million dollars from several investors, like you just mentioned. Ten cent, uh, yeah, ten cent, the least surprising yeah. uh, group on this <laughs> list ever. Uh, Amazon.com and Redpoint Ventures as well. It was valued at nine hundred million to a billion dollars a year ago. So if if it is indeed for sale today, it'll probably be a lot less than that. I would also assume the same. Um, Current discussions are focused on, again, this is rumors, current discussions are focused on a sale of the entire company, including its patent portfolio and hardware products like the original smartphone, an upcoming smart home device, and a camera attachment for the phone. Essentials engineering talent, which includes those hired from Apple Inc. and Alphabet Inc.'s, uh, Alphabet Inc.'s Google, would likely be a part of the deal, which is probably quite valuable. Do you think the the founder of Android who, who made this, um, what's his name, Ruben? Andy Ruben Andy would also be in that yeah. bucket? I don't know. Or is he the one selling it and getting the heck out? Maybe. But there could be one of those, like, don't remember the name of it right now, but it's those clauses where when the company gets bought, you have to, like, stay on mm -hmm. in order to get the good chunk of the money. I don't Golden know. handcuffs. Yeah. That, people call that. Not necessarily. Golden with, handcuffs is a. That's not necessarily player. with mergers. That's just, like, any employee. Yeah. Like it takes four years yeah. for your shares to vest or whatever, so you kind of need to stick around before you get the real money. Yeah, golden handcuffs is used for a bunch of different stuff. Um, just when mm. it has to do with like, I am staying the because baby. of money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apple and Volkswagen are apparently going to be making driverless cars. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting two names to be in the top. The the Apple making a driverless car thing has been. Uh, that was guessed by Linus like five years ago or something like that. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Like it since does. they like design, the holy grail of design is in, of industrial design is cars. So it's a pretty easy guess. But it's been a roller coaster since they they did have announced that they were going to make a car that was going to disrupt De Detroit and just kick all the butt. But 
then they scaled that back to being like, well, it's actually really hard to make a car. So why don't we just, uh, <laughs> we'll make the internal components and all yes. the sensors and everything for the self-driving. And we'll partner with someone like BMW because Tim Cook loves BMW or with Mercedes. And then those companies were like, nope, because <laughs> Apple wanted to control all the, all the data or some, some other aspect that yeah. those companies they bailed, so it's like they're, and then they had negotiations, negotiations with I believe Lexus. Now they're on their like their fourth choice Volkswagen's like, yeah, we'd love to work with you, and they're not even. <laughs> it's going to be a, like a standard Volkswagen. Uh, what is it? It's a particular model here. T six. Yeah, T six van. T six tra- transporter. The frame, yeah, wheels, and there. chassis of the T6 vans will remain, but Apple is replacing many components, such as the dashboard and the seats, the computers and sensors, and they're, of course, putting in a large electric car battery. Now, this isn't going to be a consumer product. Oh. No, it's not like they're just they're making these vans and you're going to be able to buy one. This is a project for them to just start getting their feet wet with self-driving. It's going to be a, a van that transports their own employees between various Apple campuses so they can, it's kind of close. That's an course. interesting, like, hey, if you screw up your engineering project, you'll kill all your friends. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, make, make, make sure you do it well, guys. Um, yeah. That's that's interesting. So, I, I, was, I was very surprised to read the, like, not going to be initially commercially available except for literally just themselves line but that's probably a fairly sensible way of going about that yeah apparently it's been quite a cluster there's no uh, indication right now if Volkswagen will be on for anything b- beyond the internal van experiment and according to the the uh article that we cited here from the new york times there was a bunch of it's- okay sorry someone in chat will they call it the bend wagon i love it i don't get it because the, the 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 first topic oh. of the show. Oh, nice. I like it. I think it's good. Sorry. They would never call it that. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that joke doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, I disagree. <laughs> it's not good enough. They would call that like impeccably designed, engineered with purpose wagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. Wagon six. I wagon. But uh, so the the all the reporting came from ex-employees and they basically said that the whole project was this brutal executives executives leading apple's car project had told tim cook that the shuttle would be completed by the end of 2018 but that deadline will almost certainly be missed according to one of these people and they also said that the project reportedly lacks a clear plan beyond the vans including any near-term commercial goals so it's Hey, there's a big wave. We They're need to hop to do on, but yeah. we don't really know what to do. Steve Jobs is dead. <laughs> Help us. We're not making very good company decisions. Johnny Ive just wants to design fashion. Speaking of company decisions, best segue. Amazon bans users for too many returns. Boom. CNET article. Apparently... You buy, you keep. Yeah. Amazon is banning customers who take advantage of its generous return policy and closing their accounts. According to the National Retail Federation, 11% of sales are returned. That seems like a lot compared to my track record of returning things. Um, And 11% of those are fraudulent, which sounds super coincidental, but whatever. Uh, They have 300 million customers. Customers are not being warned of bans, but Amazon has reinstated the accounts of those that appeal convincingly yeah because some a lot of people are really mad because they get banned and they're like i returned six things in the last year which actually is depending on how much you buy it could be a lot or not and then each one of those things had a good reason you know they it sucked it didn't the things in the box weren't what was expected or whatever so but i don't blame amazon for not giving some kind of um threshold like you need to if if you return more than x per year or if you return 15 percent of your stuff then you're gonna get banned it's obviously they're not gonna give those numbers out because then people will just game it yeah and just and ride Ride, that line and return as much stuff as they can while still getting away with it so it makes sense that they that they would do that or like buy a bunch of really really low ticket things they don't care about and then screw with the return policy on the higher stuff i don't know but yeah, it I also, get it. It also makes sense that if you, like, first of all, they need to clean out this kind of behavior because it's a lot of money. With You're talking about that many returns, that makes an impact. That's millions of dollars on, on the 
top line or bottom line or whatever line makes sense. I don't really know finance. <laughs> and it also makes sense to just ban everyone in one fell swoop and then just take on the appeals as they come in. And yeah. then a human can just directly deal with it and then reinstate your account if if you're worthy of that. And something they can probably do, and it, it, the wording of that made it sound like they're probably doing this, is like if you appeal, you'll probably get back in. Well, I wrote that. Okay. That wasn't even copy paste. Well, all right then. But I, I bet you it's that way, anyways. Um, if you appeal, you'll probably be fine. Yeah. If well, you're if you're like, yeah, well, I just didn't. There are all problems. They'll probably let you back in. Um, because most people, if you ban someone, and it was like, okay, no, that's not true. Because of moderating on the forum, people will do terrible things, and then you ban them, and they're like, what? <laughs> so yeah, no, I don't know actually. We'll I think see. it's going to be easy for them to be to keep banned the people they ban who are actually offenders of this in a big way. Like the people who are buying 800 things a year, returning 700 things or something like that. Or or just like or the, repeatedly buying a TV and returning it so they can have Yeah, or some TV. kind of other discernible pattern like that. Yeah. I feel like it'll have to be pretty blatant for them to like keep your ban after an appeal. Yeah. I know that they do. They're pretty savage with some other things. I was talking to a friend who has an, an Amazon. Um, he's like an Amazon seller for a business as his business. And there's they're really strict about fake reviews. Right. But what they were doing was like they'll actually send you a product for you to review. Um, so you bought you bought it from them. You can be a real seller or a real buyer of the product and then you get the product and then you're supposed to give a five star review. And the way that um, uh, they did this was that they give discounts to every all of those potential reviewers because you don't want to like sell an item full price amazon takes a large part of that um just to get this that's like a high cost for a fake review you want to get your fake review at the cheapest yeah. level possible so then you just if it's a hundred dollar item you send it you give 95 percent off so it's like five bucks and then amazon just gets a dollar or whatever and then you get your fake review so what amazon did is they went through and they said any item that was sold at a discount was all those reviews are gone now so you just lost of like a third of your reviews. Good. I don't know. I think that's completely okay. Because the amount of like... Well, unless you actually just had a discount code or something like that. That was legit. <laughs> and all those people were like super happy. Yeah, I tried it for the first time. It's great. I, I just came to Amazon.com slash WAN or whatever and got my product and I loved it. And here's a five-star review that's legit, but it's gone now. Because they're throwing that out the baby with the bathwater. Yeah, okay. That's fair. I just... Something that drive, drove me insane was... I was, I'm not going to disclose who, uh, largely because I don't know if they ever actually ended up doing anything with this guy. Um, I know the guy was there, but I don't know what type of association there was. I don't know if they were actually doing any business, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to say the company name. But one year at CES, I went to a company's hotel suite to Ooh. film a video. And there was a dude there. And he was hanging out. And I was waiting for my meeting. So I was just like, hey, let's let's talk. I'm, I'm, we're both overtired. We're at CES. Let's chat about stuff. Just asked him what he did. He was one of the uh like business acquisition guys for a company that posts fake fake reviews oh on amazon there's a I, whole giant company there's a huge industry of like click farms yeah. all people do all day is like create accounts and then like pages and he was like essentially one of those guys and i remember like i may have not been the nicest person <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're evil you're it, dirt. <laughs> you are a dirt <laughs> <laughs> you are a single unit yeah. of dirt. Because yeah. um, it, 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 it kind of pissed me off. But, like, these are absolutely a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're running around CES with badges. Like, this was, this was yeah, they, this is a pretty big industry. So I'm very happy that they're shutting it I down. I think that in some countries, it's like a large sector. Just like tourism is a big sector in some countries. Yeah. Click Farms is like a big deal in, in individual particular countries. Yeah. Just like scams are in some parts of Western Africa. It's like... We're all we're all making money just scamming North America. Those phone numbers that call you and, and try to get your banking info. Hackerville, Hackerville, Hackerville is an interesting thing. What's Anyways, it? the show is over. Oh, boom. See ya. Later. <laughs> see ya never. Whatever, guys. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Uh, can I say what we're doing next week? Yeah, I don't know. I better just probably... you better just sign up for Plot Flame Club, Plo <laughs> and then get early access to whatever it is we're doing <laughs> on Plot Flame Club. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. We're filming Scarecrow. <gasps> <gasps>